And there we go, we got our category updated. Hello and good morning everybody, this is Ed Wired, streaming some Star Citizen again, once again. We are in the Persistent Universe, the PU version 3.11, yeah I know, 3.12 in the Persistent Test Universe, 3.12 PTU is the new hotness. I watched uh, a bunch of people last night doing some cool stuff, looking at gas clouds, trying to get into battles with the Idris, a whole bunch of cool stuff in there. Um, that's not what that's not what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be in the in the PU doing a little bit of bounty hunting, maybe an assassination uh, mission. Uh, some things in the the stable universe here. We still got probably another uh, week, maybe another week before they push 312 over here. Hopefully, they get all the issues resolved while it's in PTU, and then before they go on, before uh, Cloud Imperium Gaming takes its holiday break, they give us a nice stable version of 312 to play for a while. Because, you know, there won't be anybody around to fix it. Uh, and I would rather have them hold off on releasing it if uh, they can't give us a stable version. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Do we have anything we need to claim here? Do we have any blowed up ships? Stored, stored, stored. Destroyed. Yeah, we need to, we need to claim that one. That was the Nomad. I had gotten a crime stat and then I went to, where I was doing something and I went to Gundo and uh, got, uh, oh I had a crime stat. I took a mission that took me to Gundo and the, the bounty hunters. Unfortunately, our automated system is unable to act. The bounty hunters caught up to me. They blew me up. And uh, that was great fun. That was great fun. Let's see what we can get. This Okay, so uh, that one, that's these ships, they get bugged like that, and you literally can't get them back until you either do an account reset, or until the next uh, patch drops, which resets stuff. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't feel too bad about something sometimes, uh, because, you know, this game's not fully okay, so we got one delivery package, we got an investigate. First cave mission, DCN. We got uh, scrap mining removal. Those are bounty hunters. Always accept the call to arms in case you run across any, uh, any bad guys. Then you get you get money. So people that might attack you while you're doing something else, you kill them. Defending yourself, you could get money if you've objected this mission. So let's do this one right here. Let's take this uh, scrap metal removal. So uh, Ida. Aberdeen and Ariel. Let's look at the star map. Okay, so we're in Everest Harbor. You can see 
it's all relatively close here. That's where we're going to be moving stuff. So we don't need to get something that's got a humongous amount of capacity. Notice it says Everest Harbor now. It didn't say uh, it didn't say a Gundo anymore. We'll keep trying to retrieve this. If it doesn't retrieve, we'll get another ship. But also, let me point out if you uh, want five thousand free in-game credits and you haven't already created an account, our automated system is unable uh, to access my that ship at this code, time. We apologize for any when you uh, create your account over there at Robert Space Industries, uh, and then later on you decide to buy a game package, uh, which is like forty dollars to, to back the game. Um, let's get a Cutlass Blackout. Um, then you, uh, if you use my code when you sign up, you'll get five thousand in-game credits for free. And if enough people use my referral code, well, I might get something nice too. Pad number two. So we're going to uh, use this Cutlass Black. We're going to go pick up some of this uh, this stuff from those three different sites. Earn some credits. Could play for about an hour, hour and a half. This is what I like to do. It's what I like to do. Now you may notice now, see it's saying pad two. Used to be if you had short attention span, AH, DH, or ADHD, you would uh, forget between the kiosk and the elevator which pad you were going to but now they've updated the uh, the ship markers to remind you which pad or which hangar you're going to which is kind of nice I'm glad they did that that's a real approval improvement Carlos Black is a uh, multi crew ship if I had somebody in game playing with me I could get them to be in uh, the turret or the co-pilot seat. Not a lot to do in the co-pilot seat, but they definitely could uh, could man the upper turret. It's a pretty cool game. Again, here we are at the uh, space station. This is one of the outside pads. You can see over there. There's part of the uh, part of the cargo dock that's been added. So we're going to go in the when it's uh, when it's sitting here. The easiest way to get in the Cutlass Black is to open the back door. This is also where we're going to put our cargo. There's a light on our helmet we can cut on if we want. And close this back door. So we've got space back here for cargo, as you can see. We've got these two big side doors on the Cutlass Black. They open up uh, especially handy if you're doing EVAs. Um, but there's no ramps on them, so when you're sitting on the ground, they're not that useful here. Two bunks if you wanted to do bed logouts. There's the little chair that goes up to get in the upper uh, to get in the upper turret. What you'll notice is missing from this ship. Oh, there's some. Uh, I think these are uh, places you could put guns, places to store your guns. But what's missing is like a galley. For food preparation and there's also which is a good thing because there's also no toilet there's no toilet you can't use the toilet on here also drake ships are known for not having ejection seats if you get uh, if you get into a bad spot you're going to uh, ride your ship down or blow up trapped in your ship so just be aware one of the things that uh, other ships have in them that the your drake systems system. are online that the Drakes do not. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and tell the space station we're going to leave. Notice we're starting off at about 300,000 credits today. My goal is to make a couple thousand every day. You are clear to launch. Okay. I just grab one of my joysticks up. Let's zoom out. 
That's not working too well. Let me get my other joystick up. There we go. Okay, now, we go to the outside view. You can see my engines are pointed down. This is one of the ships that has like a vertical takeoff uh, mode. So I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to put my landing gear up and I'm also going to pivot my engines. I think I hit the wrong key to do that. There we go. That's the right key. I, I did chaff or something. But anyway, there's your uh, there's your Cutlass Black. Pretty cool ship again. It's a second seat. It's got the upper turret there. There's these, uh, and I'm not used to flying with that other camera. So. They added uh, this cargo area. I've got dual joysticks, which makes it easier for me to do something like this. Thank you, and please visit again. So uh, what we want to do is fly over and pick up our first package. There were three planets that had the package. And uh, we'll just go over to Ida first. No particular order. Just, uh, here we go. So we'll do a little quick jump over there. Quantum drive is now on. There we go, we're doing our jump from the space station over to Ida. Quantum drive is now off. And after you jump, there's a, there's a cool down period. The longer you were traveling, the, uh, the longer the cool down period. So we're going down to HDMS. Hurston Dynamics Mining Station Rider. This will be a spline jump. Quantum drive the, is now on. Along the surface of the planet. We're in daylight right now. These moons typically have a lesser gravity. You have to be really careful about not flying too fast. Quantum drive is now off. If you fly too fast, uh, the gravity's less. You don't slow down like you might think, and you uh, you can run into the uh, into the ground pretty easy. So we'll go ahead and put uh, put our destination there where the marker is showing at our 12 o'clock. If you notice on the left hand side of the HUD, there's that vertical. Uh, that vertical bar, it's showing our speed. There's a little red hash there. That's the ideal speed. You go faster than that, things can go wrong. Handling's not as good. You go slower than that, well, you're not making as good a time as you could. If we cut on cruise control, you see there's a little up chevron right underneath it, but I'm gonna cut that off. And when I ease up on my left stick, the throttle will go down, so. That's how I'm controlling my forward speed is with the left stick. You can play this game using keyboard or HOTAS. Um, you just pick one, figure out how the controls map out, and uh, get used to it. I like dual joysticks for the six degrees of freedom, but uh, you know, it's up to you. On the right side of the HUD, you can see that number that's uh, counting down. That's my altitude, just going underneath 2,500 meters. We got our uh, artificial horizon lines. We can see we're between minus 10 and minus 15. We're pointed down a little bit. Got some other indications up here on the uh, on the HUD. CPLD means we're coupled. So we're going to fly around like in a coordinated fashion. Um, ESP is sort of like traction control, stability control. In a car, it keeps you from getting 
too wild and pulling maneuvers that could uh, harm you or harm your vehicle. And then the dot next to gear is not uh, illuminated, but when I get close and I put my gear down to land, you'll see uh, that dot will come up. And there'll be an announcement made by the uh, ship's computer. Uh, you can see flares 48, chaff 4, and then over on the right side, uh, we've got uh, arrestor missiles, arrestor 3s in there, and there's 8 of them. Fuel, 99, uh, quantum fuel, and 98 hydrogen fuel. So pretty much a lot of the stuff that we need to know is right up there on, on the HUD when it comes to you know flying and defending ourselves. And then we've got those multi-screen panels here in the uh, cockpit. Uh, some that show the status of different systems, how they're powered, how our power is split up, the status of our shields, our radar is right there in the very center, that very prominent display. We've got nothing targeted right now or else that would be showing up on one of the screens. Um, nothing red, so things are good right now. So here we go, here's the collection site. Let me put down my gear. Landing gear down. Okay. Okay. It looks like there's a uh, scrap metal is in this building right there. Now you remember I've got that back door, so I think I instead of landing on one of those pads, I think I'm just gonna land on this flat spot. Right over here. I just uh, rotated my engines. Now, a couple of things up in that right top hand corner of the screen, you'll see Engines offline. we've got a satellite thing with Wi Fi coming out of it, and we got that bullet with the circle cross through it. Bullet with the circle cross means we're in an armistice zone and weapons use is not allowed. The, uh, the satellite with the Wi Fi coming out of it means we are in a monitored area. If somebody does something bad, then they're going to know about it. Big Brother is watching. Um, okay, let's go ahead and close our ship back up so somebody doesn't sneak on our ship while we're out here. Um, our suit's already beeping at us. It's telling us it's very cold out here and our survival estimate is about 13 minutes. There are some suits that are better at protecting hot in hot conditions some that are better in protecting in cold uh, areas. We could always switch to one of those if we wanted. And you'll notice when we get inside of a building, the effects of the wind and the effects of the elements um, uh, go away because we're sheltered. Okay. We can look out. If we'd landed on that landing pad, we can see ourselves. You might say, hey, why didn't you land on the landing pad? Well, there's there's poles, there's light poles around the landing pads. Um, and in some cases, it could be a little bit longer of a walk. So in this particular case, I just decided not to. We can only carry one box at a time. Notice that circle marker is telling me where my ship is. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this box. 
I'm going to place it down here on the ground. Now I'm going to go back and get the other one. And then I'll just open up the back and I'll load both of them in at the same time. It's the way I like to do it. That blue building with the blue light there, that's Platinum Bay Landing Services. You can get out ground vehicles and some small ships on these small pads, but not the larger ships. You'll also notice one of these buildings here has got like an orange light and tower. That's the one that's got the trading terminal inside. So if you're ever doing something that requires uh, either one of those things, that's how you tell which building it's in. Okay. The wind's making me my character move very slowly. Okay, once I'm inside, I can more easily uh, grab and place uh, these things. Two packages inside of our uh, inside of our ship. If I look around, the markers I'm seeing are for the other the other pickup locations and for these uh, for these boxes. There is a very minimal amount of value associated with the scrap metal. Yes, you can take the scrap metal and sell it later on if you want some additional money beyond the, the amount you get paid for picking up. I don't usually go out of my way to do that, but that is uh, that is something you can do. Let's go ahead and before we leave our mistus, let's uh, it's not working exactly right. Cut our engines back on. That would help. Engines online. And let's spool the corner of drive while we're here. Okay, now we've got another. We've got other pickups to do. We're over here on Ida. We've got a pickup on Ariel and one on Magda. Let's go to Ariel. We'll go there next. We set our route. We've got our jump drive on. Launch complete. Pull up our gear. Landing gear up. Toggle our engines. it for the sun but one out of three there it goes it just changed one out of three outputs completed so we got some credit there let's take a look where is our next marker okay so we've got we've got to get, we've got to get a little bit of uh, altitude here in order to, to clear the planet so we've got a shot at our next uh, at our next target for jumping. Hello, one, two, three. 
it says Proxcoms. One, two, three, three, two, one. Hello, hello. And that's okay. Let's do something. Did somebody sneak on my ship? Comlink. That was black. Nobody else is on the ship but me. Usually the in-game VoIP, I mean, it, it it works a good amount of the time. A lot of people that play multi group they use Discord or they use uh, TeamSpeak um, or something. But a lot of times the in-game VoIP does work. I've got it bound up to buttons on my mouse and quantum drive is now off. I sometimes use it to talk to other players, but A lot of people have it muted in game. You know, they've gone into their game settings and they've they've muted uh, that audio, so they don't even hear you. Um, which kind of makes it antisocial, but you know, whatever. You know, I can see if you're a streamer and you don't want some knucklehead, you know, saying stuff that you know people ought not have to hear. Um, why you would do that, but. Right now, with only 50 players per server, even with just the Stanton system in game, um, if you get out of the major areas, if you if you're not on one of the major space stations, if you're not on one of the major planet centers like uh, uh, New Babbage, Area 18, Hurston, or Levski, uh, you can go quite a long time without seeing another. Uh, another player and so it kind of unless you're doing the stream thing and you're talking like I'm talking and you can you can sit here and play for a long time without saying anything and then when somebody says something it can kind of give you a startle so um, constantly having to adjust Here. I change my engines to point down. Usually, what I'll do is I'll fly along at, at close to SCM, and then when I get within about two and a half kilometers, I'll lower to about. Uh, 
half half of that. I like to stay above a thousand um, meters. our scrap metal we can see it's nighttime over here it could be a little bit harder to find a spot to land but we got some landing pads and we can cut on the lights to help us see as well zone um, our sh if our power's on our shields will stay on and sometimes there's people who like try to ram in to do other other crap um, and so by leaving the power on it gives us additional protection for our ship Notice this planet is hot, saying we got about 11 minutes of survival time in our current spacesuit on this hot planet, unlike that cold planet we were on. Markers pointing us back towards the direction of our ship. Cutlass Black, I think, uh, is a great ship. If you want to spend a little bit more than the $40 starter package, if you can jump up to $100, then um, Cutlass Black gets you something that. Um, is good for uh, multi crew, it's good for bed log out, it's good for cargo missions. You could do some dog fighting. It's not like you know, it's not like optimized for any one thing, it kind of does it all. And at that price level, it's it's pretty good. Now, you starting out with one of the starter ships, it costs less, is fine, and uh, you know, that's probably a, the best suggestion if you're not sure you're going to be interested in this game you know there's no harm in doing it one of the things i like is although there's a short period for refund you know getting your money back completely if you did start out and buy one of the starter ships spend your money and then later on you say you know what i really like this game i played a lot i really wish i had gotten something like the cups black well you can essentially um get credit for what you've already spent it's called in the game in the on the website it's called melting a pledge and then using store credit to buy 
something else. And so um, you can do that. So there's really no reason not to start off modest and wait till you sure you want something before uh, spending more money. Um, this game, uh, this game can be demanding uh, in terms of the uh, running it on a PC. Uh, pretty much, the game itself needs to be run from a SSD. Good performance, and as far as uh, graphics card, um, I think I first had an NVIDIA 760, 770, or something, and then later on I got uh, a 1060, and that, that helped. Um, and then on my last computer. Oh, see, there's another ship here. Very nice. Uh, on my last computer, I, uh, I got a better processor, and so I've got a 2080 Ti now in this one, and I'm getting about 60 frames a second. So, um, depending upon what your goal is, Performance wise. Engines online. Uh -oh. So let's let's go to the exterior cam. And we can see there's a Mercury Star Runner that landed on the pad behind us. Very nice. Aberdeen is our next place we want to go to go pick up the uh, go pick up the stuff there. So we'll take a hop. Launch complete. we just left not being followed by the Mercury Star Runner so that's really interesting you know we got to see another another player that's pretty cool Set for Aberdeen. Trying to see where the marker is for Aberdeen. Oh, there it is. It's obstructed, so we need to go.
so what I'm watching is I got my radar down there and the blue blip for the MSR just about to go off it's down at like the six o'clock position but there's also that square that diamond shaped tri uh, triangle which is the marker for the next place we're jumping to and right now there's a little red triangle at the bottom which is telling me obstructed when that turns green then I'll know instead of climbing out I can turn around level off to the marker and jump over there so that's what I'm watching just watching that So you notice we're two out of three outposts. that route. Now we've got an orbital marker that's going to show up. Won't give you those on the ground. getting too close to Klesher. In fact, I think we jumped. The drive is now off. We jumped to Klesher. There's the collection site right there.
we're going to get hassled about the about the private property. know if I can get well, I guess I can get in and out of this thing like this Appears to be doable. Where is the scrap metal? Just over the hill. I noticed my sink rate was pretty high when I was coming in. The ship wasn't flying quite like I wanted. Still, we're only 105 meters away. That's not bad. I got two of these boxes to haul, it looks like. Now, it's very hot over here, so we need to make sure our, uh, our little space dude doesn't overheat. landing let's go back and get the second box You'd think if you had the contract to remove waste, you wouldn't have to worry about being hassled for trespassing, right? You'd be like an authorized person.
engines online. Out of the area. And I'm wondering is it, it was there damage from was there damage from that rough landing? I don't I don't see an engine mark knocked off. I don't know why it was doing that. Okay. So we got, we got our credits for the scrap. We could sell scrap at Port Olisar. Do we have enough fuel to get there? Yes, we do. So let's go to Porto. Sell our scrap. Port Olisar buys scrap because Crusader Industries needs it to build ships. Most places in the galaxy don't buy scrap, they have scrap. Now we won't make enough, probably won't even make enough to cover our fuel costs to fly to PO to drop off our scrap, but it's an interesting thing to do. Stretch our legs while we're flying over.
It is kind of boring. Kind of boring with these long space flights. That's why I guess they put a chess table and they have a pool table and there's other things on the larger ships for people to do while they're flying. But you never know when space pirates are going to jump you. So you have to be vigilant. You have to be alert at all times for space pirates. Which is why you accept that call to arms mission. So if a space pilot does pull you out and you got your hands full and you do kill uh, one of them, then you get paid for it as opposed to if you didn't accept the mission. Well, you would you would just have to do what you do to survive, but you wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't be financially compensated for it. Okay. So now we're coming out of warp, and then it'll be a very short jump over to Port Olasar. Port Olasar is a place where uh, a lot of griefing can happen. Um, and so you always want to be on your toes at your uh, most alert state when going to Port Olasar. Quantum drive is now off. And notice we'll have a longer cool down um, period because we were, we were jumping more often. I already see the red marker for Port Olasar on the screen. Quantum drive is now on. Quantum drive is now off. Don't aim directly at the space station, aim beside it. That's your pro tip. to assign landing bay. Put our gear down. Landing gear down.
No, it's not a very good. Landing complete. Have a pleasant stay. Launch complete. Landing complete. Much better. Much better. Again, you never cut your power off here, which would cut your shields off. People pad ram at this station. They're very bad about pad ramming. And don't ever leave your ship open because people are bad about trying to steal ships too. Because unlike this, the places where there's hangars, if somebody gets in your ship, they don't have to be the owner to get the hangar doors to open. They could just blast right off. There's another cutlass block right there. Coming into land. Let's go in here and sell our scrap before somebody crashes our ship. Drake Cutlass Black. Scrap. We want to sell all of our scrap. We're going to get 133 AUEC. Woohoo! We're in the money. Alrighty. That's it. Mission accomplished. I think there's any windows that look out where we were but that's it folks we did uh, we did some missions we removed scrap and then we uh, we flew to Port Olsar and we sold our scrap for some extra money so we ended up today with uh, three hundred and two thousand six hundred and twenty one alpha UEC if we look at our Contracts manager, <coughs> we see we went and we did these things. We earned 1950, and then we we basically took that over 2,000 by selling that scrap. If we wanted to do more, we could go in here. We could accept some stuff. We could accept. There's no player beacons. Uh, call to arms. We didn't we didn't run into any bad people that we had to, to take care of. Um, so there you go so thank you everybody for watching my name is Edward you can see me here on Twitch live usually East Coast time um, and then you can watch the VODs video on demand on Twitch after the fact and about 24 hours after I play live it gets exported over to my YouTube channel you can see it there remember if you're, you're thinking about sponsoring this game when you create your account at uh, Robert Space Industries, you use my referral code that you see there in the chat or the comments for this video. At the time of your account creation, if you decide to back the game, you'll get 5,000 in-game credits for free. If enough people use my referral code, I'll get something nice as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.